Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, welcome to the Heal Talk Tuesday. As you know, Heal Talk Tuesday is coming to you each and every week at 12 noon and bringing you uh, thoughts, information, inspiration, motivational, uh, and healthy, uh, healthy tips. So today I wanted to talk about something that has come up twice in the last week. And, uh, you know, I got an email, by the way, I want to say, if I get to cough, please, uh, uh, my apologies, because I'm recovering from a very bad cold. I don't know if you got it or not. Seems like <coughs> everyone in the world has had this cough, this flu. Some call it COVID's cousin and can be just about anything. But I believe it's the season. It's change. And when something outside is changing from hot to cold there's this change and the pollen the weather the trees the wind and the wind brings everything so it's just about anything and it's part of life and we go along with it um as you know i don't take medicine so I, everything I do is natural. There's the honey and the ginger and turmeric, everything. So that's one of the healthy ways I cope with everything. And I think by doing brisk walks and everything, I also come to strengthen my immune system and I do those shots, the turmeric shots. Um, it's good for my immune system. I get it at Costco and I drink one of those shots every single day. So that's the tip for how to deal with cold. But today's message is a little bit more on that. And uh, we want to talk about self-love, self-acceptance and self-esteem. And that's the reason I wanted to do this because I got an email and I want to read the email to you and it is by someone um, who says dear Lisa thank you for your weekly heel talks in one episode you spoke of self-care and self-love I understand self-care daily needs and everything but self-love I do not know how to what is self-love how can I love myself more when all my life I have been told I will amount to nothing that I am not as pretty or smart as my sister who was the number one cheerleader in high school and prom queen to this day she still outshines me now as a grown-up I have self-confidence issues and nothing I do works please help me I will tune in next week in hopes uh, you have an answer for me well Jacqueline I want to say thank you very much for your message that you sent and let me shed a light <clears throat> first of all how are self-love and self-esteem different we look for love everywhere but most of us don't know how to love ourselves and we can receive as much love as we give to ourselves what is it that I say? If you don't love yourself, how can somebody else love you? But here's the thing. When you have this desire, many are good in having compassion and love for others, but forget to give that to themselves. So self-love is one step beyond what is involved in compassion and love. Okay, so there are few stages and I'm going to go and touch upon some of the stages. One is, you know, there is a saying, boost your confidence 
and um, build self-esteem. So when we say boost your confidence, that means you are someone who believes you already have confidence. Now you have to boost it, make it bigger, bolder, right? But building self-esteem is like, in a way it's suggested you don't have it. Now you have to learn how to build it. And I believe that is where we start because you got to have self-esteem for any change in life, for anything that you want to improve in your life, to believe that you are worthy of it, to believe and have faith in yourself to know that, yes, I can succeed. I can be as good as my sister, maybe not in cheerleading, but in something else. So let's talk about this. Self-esteem, most people um, seek approval from the outside. So perhaps you were seeking validation and approval from your parents and or looking for the validation and the words, the kinder words or something. And I am so sorry that they didn't give it to you. But it seems like you forgot to give it to yourself or maybe you didn't learn how to give it to yourself, which I understand because our subconscious mind stores information and that information is the information that gets to replayed over and over, over and over. And if that is the messaging that you believe that's the key word that you believed it was that she is better than you and the messaging that she's prettier than you and you started walking in her shadow, right? Is not necessarily that she felt the same. It's just she got approval and validation from others for being that. And she was good in cheerleading. Yes, she was the prom queen, but that was high school. What's happened? And you're not shedding that light in what has happened since then, being an, an adult that you are. So where are you working? How successful are you? And if you believe you're not successful, what is the success that you want? What, how can you measure success in your life? Is it being married? Is it having a bigger house? Is it having more money? How can you measure? And that is my question to you, which I believe if you have a session or two with me, we can build on that confidence of yours. So here's basically what I, when Building a, uh, the self-esteem is that you stop blame. Number one, uh, you blame yourself and you blame uh, your parents or stop that blame of what they used to tell her versus you. So once we start that finger pointing and blame, that means we point the finger at us and that resentment the grudge, the blame that you have inside you, even if you love your sister, that negative feeling still remains inside. I want to digress for a moment and just say, I had a client a few months ago who came and came for something that had she had kept a secret in her family's life for the longest time. In her opinion, it was a big secret. And yet it was very insignificant once she shared it. And I helped her feel confident enough and put the resentment and everything away and just share it with her uh, son and daughter. Once she did that, in all the years that she wanted to 
uh, lose weight and she came she has come to me for weight loss because I work with the mental and the emotional uh, part that we hold on to and that is quite heavy negative feelings that we store we suppress we hold on to without realizing consciously the subconscious mind is holding that information and that was a heavy burden now when it's a heavy burden it sits in your body so I don't know what your weight is but if there are grudges blames things towards your family towards your sister I want you to take a an account and start writing expressing and sharing so your first step was even sending that email to me and I want to say kudos to you for doing that now let's go back to um, what is self-acceptance right so far we did the self-esteem now we come to self-acceptance because my 3e method is we evoke what was right it's like turn the leaf to see what's under the leaf under the rock that is so heavy <coughs> in order for us to come to embracing which is self-acceptance accepting yourself for who you are just as you are with all your flaws with all the negatives with all the strengths with all your um, beauty inner beauty whatever it is that you have it's despite your failures and limitations that's it here's my suggestion for you what if just for one minute if you were to close your eyes and go back in time perhaps high school time when your sister was shine, outshining you and everything else that was happening and I don't know how much younger you are and maybe you didn't like cheerleaders and you had this idea about who cheerleaders are okay that they're constantly happy they're they're like the center of attention and now you're not the center of attention but for one minute if you were to close your eyes and go to you in high school and if you were to sit next to her and let her know how wonderful she is how bright she is how smart she is how valuable she is and how much her sister loves her despite being a cheerleader or prom queen that when she looks at you either at home when you're playing when you were younger there was no competition it was just two sisters and if you can just look at yourself at that age and say she's got qualities that her sister envies that she looks up to you even if you are younger that you have qualities no one else has seen but you know it and if you can share those qualities and remind that younger girl who she is just for a moment and if you can become more self forgiving and let go of self judgment that's the first step in accepting who you are just as you are today hmm? and uh, instead of comparing yourself to others either in positive ways or negative ways come to appreciate who you are that's what 
self-acceptance is. Now, when it comes to self-love, it might be difficult to come from zero to 100 to self-love. But self-love and self-esteem differ in this, that it's like self-esteem is an evaluation. You're looking to judge, analyze, and criticize, right? And self-acceptance is just an attitude. It's like love combined. It's like feeling and action combined with one another. Anything we want to change in life to become better, to become healthier, to be lose the weight or change a habit or a behavior, you must start with self-acceptance, then come to build yourself uh, steam to know that you are worthy of the change, you are worthy of the success, you are worthy to be number one, you are worthy as much, as much, not more, not less, because who you are is so unique, so beautiful, that you forgot to mention that to yourself. Now, self-love is healthy. It is not selfish, it is not self-indulgent, it's not egoistic, it's saying, I do love myself. That's it. If no one else loves me, just like the beautiful song that um, Miley Cyrus did uh, about flowers, and that after her breakup, she did this beautiful song. When I hear that song, I blast it. And the same happened last week. I had those beautiful tulips, right? So my client walks in, he, not she, and in the afternoon, he says, beautiful flowers, who got it for you? I said, I get flowers for myself. I treat myself to flowers. And there was a time that I used to do it every week. And now I do it every other week because I love having flowers surrounding myself. If you see my posts and everything, I'm very much grounded. I ground myself with the beautiful things and that I like to surround myself. That's self-love, that's self-care, that's self-acceptance, that's self-nurturing. And no one has to buy it for me. It's the same as the song. I can buy myself flowers and I can take myself dancing and I can take myself to the beach. I can do all that. Of course, it would be amazing to go with someone that I share it with, that I love, that I care, that I can hold hands and lean on and share the beauty with another person. But you can take care of yourself. Hmm? And that's where the independence comes. So most people think too little of themselves and not too much. And because they've been told stop being so selfish and being selfish is okay not self-centered that means everybody has to do everything for me no that's not what i am saying but selfish means i do care about myself my surrounding and i know what i want so that is what building is building self-esteem and self-love and self-care so they say love love thy neighbor as much as you love yourself so some love others more than they love themselves here's what i will say recognize what you're good at we're all good at something and whether it's cooking singing working, excelling in whatever it is that you do. Not everyone is a uh, is meant to be a doctor. Not everybody is meant to be a nurse, an attorney, CPA, uh, a housewife, a mother. I am not a mother. 
and but i have surrounded myself with lots of kids and i do a lot of service uh, organizations and things that i do with children so i'm good with that and build better relationships first with yourself that younger version of yourself and then with your friends i did a post uh, just yesterday that Facebook reminded me of a picture and then I put two pictures that I have two best friends one I've known her since first grade and the other from the beginning of high school and we're still friends and we still talk and we still get together any relationship it's easy to make friends but to keep a friendship or a relationship going is something that you nurture and nurturing starts with you so be kind to yourself that's the key before you love yourself learn how to be kind and it's okay to be assertive and know what you want what flowers you like what colors you like I love scarves scarves and my the, they are my signature right my necklace is my signature my scarf is my signature and start saying no stop being a yes person yes to everything just because it's their opinion it doesn't mean it's good for you again just because they say it's good for you does not mean it is good for you you have your own opinion of what is right what is wrong and give yourself permission to be perfectly imperfect that's it you are a prom queen maybe not that high school but you can go dance anywhere and be the queen you can dance in your room and be your own queen and if you have children and that's with them so those are my suggestions uh, self-esteem self-acceptance self-kindness brings self-love and I hope today's message was beneficial to you again thank you and everyone who watches please subscribe uh, like and if you have anything you would like me to speak about share bring forth and interview people that you might find interesting by all means let me know my name is Lisa Bubari I'm your expert hypnotherapist and I look forward to seeing you next week until then God bless you and may the universal light surround you always Bye-bye. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.